Cuckoo. Remember me? Gobbermouth. Long time no see. The cuckoo are cool. This way, this fair old creek has done an essential thing. Hmm. Speaking of, what do we have here? Interesting contraption. Looks like the four-eyed creep has been at it again. Huh. What is this? Huh. Looks like he's trying to teach you all a lesson about the senses. You know, it don't matter what he tries to teach you, he's still an idiot. None of this stuff is any use. It's all crap. Let me tell you, there's only a few things you need to know about and I will tell you everything you need to know. My tricks will come in very handy. And on my tooth tricks, they will not touch you at all on the leg. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's always telling me I'm too nosy. Where's the trick in that? Telling me to not it? I'm going to start putting my foot in my mouth. Hey. Keep your hands off my leg. <coughs> it's a monitor. Cold Hey everyone, um, sorry for the long delay in posting a new video. Uh, I was originally going to post this as kind of like um, an essentials video, but there really are just a few essentials as far as taking care of your doll. Um, you know, like the, the mineral oil, the, the starch, and um, the sponges, etc. So what I've decided to do instead is to share with you all the things that I use um, in caring for my dolls as well as uh, customizing and whatnot. And this is mainly to kind of just share with you what I use to kind of maybe give you some ideas uh, that you may not have already thought of because a lot of this stuff is actually uh, was inspired by things that I saw online or that you know got ideas from from like what other doll owners or, or enthusiasts have, have done. So hopefully this will give you some ideas uh, to further um, explore things with your own dolls. So um, I'm just going to do this all randomly, but I'm going to start with um, the cleaning and maintenance type thing. Uh, one thing I've, I've always tended to um, recommend is a boot mat if you have a standing doll and this is uh, the one that you know the one with ridges and the anti-skid bottom uh, particularly if you have a hard wood or tile floor because it won't slide but even on carpet it's great because it won't slide and the reason why is because if you have the pegs on the stand well if you have standing feet doll it's going to have pegs and the ridges it prevents it from sliding when uh, the oil and stuff gets on the bottom, and it's just, it helps um, minimize the mess. He's still an idiot. A, a lightweight doll. Um, I also recommend that you get one that has adjustable height um, because you may want to sit down uh, to do some work on your doll, or you may want to stand up. All, all my lawn tables have adjustable height. I also have a vinyl tablecloth in here somewhere. Um, and this is good for basically if you're doing any like um, makeup or painting or stuff, whatever, and you don't want to get it all over the place. Um, and I have a white sheet, and I mainly use this um, when I want to cover cover something up, and I don't want to get crap all over it. He's still an idiot. 
Um, I also keep a, a bucket that I, you know, will keep warm water in, but I also keep uh, torn cloths that are actually um, from the blankets that come with the dolls and sponges and gloves that I, I just rewash and reuse. Um, I also have here um, a tarp that is used for the dolls that do not have standing feet or the dolls that I have to put on a long table. Uh, that's another thing I recommend is having a uh, heavy duty table, not one like this, but one that can withstand, I would recommend at least 150 pounds um, simply because better safe than sorry. And the extra blankets, okay, those are always good to have. Um, cotton gloves. Now this I have, one of these is baby powder, excuse me, one of them is cornstarch. I generally use cornstarch, but sometimes if I, if a doll has a particular, um, you know, funky, um, odor, like sometimes some of them have like a gasoline type smell, I may add a little bit of baby powder to it. Um, sorry, it's like really warm out. It's like the middle of October. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'll add a little bit of that to get rid of that. Um, that mineral oil, this is what I use when I do my repairs. Um, or if I don't want any um, scented oil. This is the oil that I use for cleaning. It's um, lavender scented baby oil. And I like the lavender smell and it also doesn't have the baby, it doesn't smell like the baby oil, baby oil. Um, this is a spray bottle I actually got at Walmart in the, um, in the aisle where they sell like the drill bits and whatnot for like your, the, the Dremels uh, and, and like the drills. And it's the kind of spray bottle that you can actually spray upside down or like at any angle. And it's particularly useful when you're spraying like thick liquids. And so using this to spray oil is really good. Um, so I use this to spray uh, the dolls. Um, I also have this. Uh, this is actually an empty um, baby oil bottle that I just uh, widen that little spurt there so I can just squirt it on if I want to. And I also made one with this. So basically I, I always can have one with me based on what I'm, I'm doing. And I have a bunch of different sizes of brush. And this is one thing I want to particularly uh, mention that I, I really recommend uh, you all um, having. Um, aside from the mini corn starches and the mini oils, they're just convenient to have, uh, you know, like in your little kits. I tend to go a bit overboard because I like to get real creative. Um, but what I, what I will recommend to you, okay, is having several of these, okay, and having any kind of one of these, whatever. And this is a thick, it's not like um, abrasive or anything, but it's like really thick, it doesn't move much. All right, and what I'll do is I'll just take like this, all right, and this is empty, but I'll go like that, all right, and I'll get all the stuff on there. And then what I'll basically do is all the starch will be on there, and I'll just take this, and I'll just go like that, okay, and then I can just whip it in there and do stuff like that, and it helps prevent it from, like, packing on too thick. Um, I found that to be a great way to go about doing it. You will also find these. This is like what they use when you go to get your hair done. Those things that they use to do the back of your neck. And this is a smaller version of that. And these are, these are really, they, um, they turn very easily, whatever you want to call them. I don't know what they're called. I call them barber brushes. But they're basically really good at just um, smoothening it all off. And what I will tell you is if you get, you know, you do part of an area and you just go like this, sometimes you can just move it along and you can actually end up covering areas 
that haven't been covered yet and save yourself some time. Uh, just, you know, go about it uh, evenly. It's, I just find it's, it's, it, it not only saves you a lot of time, but it also saves you from having to redo a lot of things. And then here, this is actually some cut up like ShamWow things that I use to basically just soak up excess stuff. I got these in the um, health and beauty section. They're like twin uh, cotton swabs that are like pointy. Then there's the black ones. I don't really need to use those. These are what I really like because they have those um, round swabs. These are really good for um, doing facial makeup, I find, as well as the pointy ones. Um, I got these at the dollar store, okay? This is a glass cutting board and this is a wooden cutting board. And I basically, I use these for projects um, that where I want to protect the surface. Um, obviously, if I'm doing something where I'm using a, a soldering iron or a heat gun, I'll rest the, um, the holder on this. I won't put the actual soldering iron on here or the heat gun on here but I'll put the holder on here to protect it, um, or other things like that. Now this here is one thing I have to, I cannot recommend it enough, is a, uh, it's like a magnified reading lamp. Uh, but you can also use it for sewing and all other things. This one, it, it turns, it goes like this, and it turns, whoa, that's bright. It goes all like this, and it has three different color tones. Um, it's USB and it comes with a um, regular power thing. Um, and it's a tabletop and it also has a clamp. I got this off Amazon, it wasn't that expensive. And it has a magnifier. And the reason why I recommend this is particularly when you're doing close up jobs, uh, whether it um, like um, makeup and whatnot, because I tend to use um, uh, heat gun method on a lot of my repairs or uh, customizations. You need something where you can shine real bright light because you have to watch out for the glaze. So having this is really good and also having the magnification really helps. Um, this is actually nail polish remover. I just use that to clean um, these things when I'm trying to clean up super glue. Um, if you don't want to invest in one of those, you can also get this pretty cheap. It's just a headlamp, okay? Um, this one's battery operated. They have USB ones. Um, this one's low on batteries, but um, you can put this on your head and it has different angles. But I think that one's better. Um, and this is another option. Um, has that and has that. I actually use these for, for other things, but I use them for that as well. And I have scissors that don't have sharp ends. Okay, so if you, you know, when you're going, you want to cut something and you don't want to poke um, the TPE, okay, you know, they don't have sharp ends, they're like round tip. Um, and it's regular scissors. I also have here, um, this is something I'm going to do in a totally different video uh, because I'm still perfecting it, but I bought some of that tape primer that Morgana had mentioned, and I lucked out because I was successful in making my own glue the very first time. Um, this is glue for Tyler, who is a doll that's in my bedroom. Uh, it's a doll that is basically defective, and I removed uh, removed the penis connector. I'm actually going to turn him into a transgender doll uh, using one of those um, pocket pussies that came with a machine I bought, and um, that's going to be interesting doing that. Um, so <coughs> I'm going to use this to uh, do that surgery. I like, I actually like doing stuff like that, it's really fun. And then this is uh, for JJ. 
Um, this is Alex. I actually uh, repaired Alex's back and I put a, a stiffener so he could still bend, um, but not quite as easily before. But then I dropped him and the stiffener broke. So now I got to open him back up and fix the stiffener. But at least the, the welding from the back didn't break. But I used actually, I just used some welding putty. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't like I used a welding gun. And I only did that because Otherwise, he was just going to keep plopping over, um, so I had to do what I could do. Uh, this is for Thomas. I, I'm actually, I ordered some more of that primer. It's going to come in the mail because uh, I want to fix Thomas's wrists. And that's for EJ. I'm going to fix his wrists. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do a tutorial on that um, and uh, on, on the wrists because I know a lot of people have broken wrists. And since I have two dolls, I'm probably going to do one of them and see about perfecting it and then do a tutorial with the other one. That way, whatever mistakes I make, I can correct them and then do the tutorial on the second one so that, you know, you don't have to watch all my mistakes and can instead just learn from them. So, then here... This is what I was telling you about, uh, the sea sponges. That's what those are. I cut them up. And then there's more sponges there. As you can see, I go a bit overboard on all my contraptions here. I just, this is just a big hobby of mine. I just really love doing all of this, and especially nowadays, you know. Anyways, um finally got a lot of this stuff organized and into bags like these are uh, J, uh, JJ's uh, because I had gotten him a new body um, he was one of my first dolls so his first body got damaged relatively quickly um, these are these are two dolls I don't even have anymore, but I have the spare TPE. And uh, so I have, you know, these things here and, you know, all different colors because, you know, I may end up wanting to do something on a doll and may want something of a different color. So I keep them all in, in that. And what I do is I have... I have some in big pieces, and then I have some in tiny pieces. And I use the tiny pieces to make glue, and I use pieces like that that I may use if I need to do repairs or something, and then I'll just cut off what I need to, to use. Now, in here, I have, I have a couple of um, hands, uh, hand wrists that are not broken, that I may use, well not may use, I will use for repairs, and um, extra bolts, as well as those um, extra penis rods. Another thing I'm, I'm looking into doing is using the glue and um, uh, taking, trying to, I'm trying to make some, um, either some flaccid, um, some of the flaccid penis attachments, or um, being able to remove the connectors and like make one penis that has like this kind of connector have this kind of connector instead so that it can be interchangeable. Um, but you gotta be, you know, it's, it's, it's something I'm just kind of flirting with an idea at the time. I don't know if that's even gonna be possible but it's something I'm hoping to do. Okay, um, this is some makeup. I actually made this. I just took powder from those, those kit things and I just put them in these little bottles here. Um, and I use these for all different um, types of purposes. Eyebrows, um, these might be for eyeshadows or whatever, nipples and lips and 
uh, face. And here we've got, this stuff is for eyebrows, lips, all different other stuff. I got these, I don't, some of them I got on clearance at Walmart, some of them I got on the dollar store, uh, some of them I got at um, uh, Am off of Amazon. I recommend going with the powder makeup and going with, the, with it being um, the matte, M-A-T-T-E, because you, th that's the kind that doesn't have the um, shiny. You want the kind, uh, particularly this brand right here, um, NYX, I have found lasts, um, lasts long and really well. Um, it's um, a real good powder makeup. And um, I particularly like it because they don't test on animals. In here, another thing that I strongly recommend, you can find these as well in the health and beauty section, are the wedges. These are, the, these are a must. Uh, they're foam wedges and they can be used to apply makeup as well as wipe it off. And it, what's so great about them is they don't leave any residue, like, you know, like Q-tips might or whatever. I love those things, and they're not that expensive. Now, this here, okay, that's just another makeup thing, but this is a bunch of, this is basically like a, you know, brown set. Another thing that, that I got on clearance at Walmart. And I like that it has the black and all the other things. And I have different kinds of, uh, I got this in the art section at um, Walmart. Maybe that was at Walmart, I'm not sure. I have different kinds of um, eye pencils. Now what I recommend as far as um, doing things on, on those for pencils is getting the retractable ones uh, because if you get the ones that are like like real pencils they have to sharpen I don't find you get a really good result but if you get the ones that are retractable um, I, I, I just find they you get a better react you get a better um, result on the on the TPE with, with those um, one thing I'm going to be doing at some point, um, these are um, eyebrow, um, eyebrow uh, stencils, and you can buy those um, online, but I'm going to show you something else in a minute that I'm going to be uh, doing um, in the future. I had mentioned I needed to do, redo eyebrows, and I and I will. Um, but that's kind of an idea. But this is if you end up doing it like all one color. I like the real finely painted ones that look like real hair. Then I have this is for drying the brushes. Now I didn't get all this stuff at. at at once, because that would have been like a real expensive trip. I started, I got my first doll in September of 2019, and I just got um, that head thing, I think was my most recent um, purchase. So, I mean, I'm talking about a little over two years I've, uh, I've gotten all this stuff. Um, I wish I could remember who, but there's a bunch of people that have that have um, mentioned it. But um, I tried it on um, JJ and on Adam because I redid their eyebrows, and I'm going to do a tutorial on this. I promise you. I can't tell you when because I am so backed up on on videos, but. These eyebrow tattoos. I got these off of Amazon, and I mean you can get them for. I mean I suppose you can get them on eBay too. 
Um, I mean, I've heard you can get them on eBay for like maybe three or four bucks. I don't know. Um, I got these off of Amazon, um, and I think they were like seven bucks each. Um, and you basically you just cut them out and you wet them and then you stick them on. Um, I mean, there's a little more to it than that. But on the back of it, there's, um, see, this is the, the back, and this is what you put on it. And you soak, you cut this out, and then you, you soak it in water, and then you would press this against their face. What I'm going to try doing is I have a, um, a wood-burning kit, and I'm going to see if I can find a way. I don't know if I'll be successful. But I'm going to see if I can find a way to carve, all right, um, to carve a stencil um, like that into like either a thin piece of wood or something to kind of make a wooden stencil like those so that people could make their own makeup and try and do it permanently. But I've got to see if I can find... Um, um, a wooden stencil like that but then it's like well if I find a wooden stencil like that then I've got to find a way to find something I can then transfer it onto because you can't bend wood onto that so then I'm like thinking well what do I put it on so you know it's just an idea I'm kind of brainstorming right now but that's what I'd like to do but these are supposed to last last a long time, so maybe I won't need to do it. I don't know. But they come with quite a bit, so I mean, if, even if one of these only lasts like a month, and I mean, they come with one, two, three, four, five, wait a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so there's n nine sets in each. So if you use one set on each doll, and they last a month, that's nine months, and you pay say seven bucks for all of these. I mean, that's not a that's not a whole lot of money to keep that going. Uh, these are hairs that I'm going to be using for making the pubic patches. These are eyelashes that I, I bought online. I have found that, that getting the bottom lashes, these are top lashes, getting bottom lashes is very difficult to get. Um, these are also top lashes. Trying to figure out where my bottom lashes are. I think these are them. Yep. Those are the bottom lashes. And those are brown. And these are brown top lashes. And I gotta do an eyelash tutorial. I remember that. I haven't forgotten, I just haven't gotten them done. And I have different kinds of nail kits that I use. And I have uh, US, the USB, not USB, yeah, the USB heaters. And then I have the extra eyes. And I have my, my homemade stain remover. It's basically uh, benzoyl peroxide and baking soda and uh, something else I forget um, but that's what's in here and there's that and so the last thing I want to show you is my um repair kit type thing. This is a, um, therm a heat, uh, thermometer gun. Basically you turn this on, you point it, and this is good for testing the temperature of, um, like when you're testing the temperature of the TPE. Uh, these are little bottles. <laughs> good thing I told you that, right? And um, I'm using these to make uh, different kinds of paste. This is that wrapping that comes around the skeleton stuff. I always save this 
and I recommend you do the same thing if you ever have have any and you can use heat or that primer to remove the spare TPE on it this stuff is is very valuable because if you ever have to do repairs and you need to rewrap that that um, the the rods this you know this protects it especially if you have to do repairs and I have here all of my soldering bits and I have some silicone this is a uh, high heat silicone I use these to cover um, areas where I don't want heat to get to when I'm using my heat gun these are actually part of a uh, back brace they're part of what I used to um, for the um, uh, stiffener thing for Alex that I need to prepare and and I have here all different kinds of tweezers uh, they're basically kind of all the same just at different angles and I have the 220 and 320 sandpaper which is used when you do the um, the the heat heat gun or uh, heated spoon method uh, for your heating and you uh, press the uh, sandpaper on there these I use are um, I use for when I'm doing repairs what I will often do okay is I use these instead of spoons and the reason why is because I can never find a spoon that's small enough and because this is so rounded like that it doesn't dig in and the other thing I use this one in particular for as well as this one is to apply paste um, to repairs and I believe I got that off of Amazon as well and this is a um, a 220 sponge um, for where I need to use the sandpaper but I want to press down on something this here is a wood burning kit which I use um, sometimes instead of a soldering iron and the main reason I sometimes use this instead is because this gives you the option you can go really high but it also gives you the option of at least from what I've been able to experience with this particular one with a lot of soldering irons, um, at least the ones I've got, the lowest you can go is 200 degrees. Um, I don't know how low this one starts out at, but I know it starts up lower than my soldering gun. So it kind of gives you the option. Unfortunately, this doesn't give you the temperature. It just starts out low, so it gives you a lower temperature. And it also, it has different things here, including that round, smooth one. Um, which I really like it also gives you a long um, a long round one there um, which I also particularly like and those I just don't have those in soldering um, tips so I use this I actually you tend to use this more than my soldering gun um, simply because I like the temperature control um, oftentimes better. I got this at Walmart in the craft section. Now, um, for this, I got off of Amazon. It's a soldering station. I kind of modified it a bit. I didn't modify the actual station. I modified the holder. Um, because this normally, okay, um, this normally sits up here and this normally sits on the side and I wanted it to be separated so that I could have it in different places so um, this normally sits here and this is the soldering gun um, that normally sits there um, but this is a soldering station and 
and then I use this for the um, wood burning kit. And these are for the heat gun. Um, there's uh, a square and three sides of, of those. I don't usually use these because, um, I mean, unless I need to get, you know, just a little bit of air in a very small area, um, I may use, it, use that, but I, um, I don't normally use these on the dolls uh, because I don't want to direct too much hot air at, at such a small at such a small place because I don't want to over overheat it. Now another thing I got, and I haven't tried this yet, um, it's a hot point drill. It's I'm going to use for the rhinestones um, that I'm making clothes with, which is uh, something I'm going to do in another tutorial. But I put it in I put it in with here because I may try the drill bits to see how they can work on. Um, on um, doll repairs, etc. You know, just trying stuff out and see how that all works and all that stuff. And I think, I think that covers everything. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. So, uh, thank you for watching and until next time, everybody take care. And tell your friends. Looks like Fuzzo Treat left the corner room. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just have to upload it ourselves now, won't we? <laughs>